The Sleeping Beauty by Charles Evans Long ago in France there lived a king and queen. More than anything, they longed for a child. At last, to their great happiness, the queen gave birth to a little girl. All the bells in the land were rung with joy. The king and queen invited all the fairies in the kingdom to the naming party for the baby. And what a party it was! Plates and silverware of pure gold were set with care for each guest. But one fairy, Maleficent, who had left fifty years before and had not been seen in all that time, showed up at the door. Quickly the king and queen found a place setting for the new guest. But alas, the plate and the silverware were not of pure gold. This made the old fairy very angry. Soon it was time for each fairy to give her blessing to the baby. When it came to Maleficent's turn, she stood up and pointed her long finger at the sleeping baby girl in the cradle. I declare, before all of you, Maleficent called out, that this child, on her sixteenth birthday, she'll prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel, and die. With a whoosh of smoke, the evil fairy vanished. Everyone cried out with alarm, as you can imagine. But one fairy had not yet given her blessing. The king and queen this fairy, whose name was Meriwether, to reverse the curse. Meriwether shook her head sadly that was not possible but she could soften the curse. On her sixteenth birthday, she said, when the princess pricks her finger on the spinning wheel, instead of dying she will fall asleep for one hundred years. One hundred years, said the queen. After our daughter turns sixteen, we will not know her anymore. So the king ordered every spinning wheel in the kingdom to be brought to the palace and burned. To be extra sure the princess would not be anywhere near a spinning wheel, he also ordered the fairy Meriwether, along with two other fairies, Flora and Fauna, to take the baby far away. The fairies would raise the child in a cottage, deep in the woods. There. They would keep her safe until after her sixteenth birthday. After that day it would be safe to bring back the princess, who had been named Aurora, to the castle. Aurora grew up knowing no others than the three fairies, whom she knew as her aunts. The animals of the forest were her friends. The birds and the deer, the chipmunks and the rabbits, followed her around as she fed them treats and cooed to them. From the time she was little, Aurora was told she must stay inside the hills that surrounded them. She did not mind that in the least. The woods were wide and deep inside the hills, and there was plenty of room for her to play. One day, Aurora came home to the cottage to find her three aunts preparing for a party. What's going on? She said. Tonight we will celebrate your sixteenth birthday said Flora. It is, said Aurora. That means tomorrow I will go back to the castle. Yes, said Meriwether. We have kept you safe from that spinning wheel for sixteen years. Soon it will be time for you to take up your royal life as a princess. And the first thing for you will be to get married, said Fawn. Married, already? said Aurora. Do you know who I'm supposed to marry? We do, said Fauna with a wave of her hand, but there's no need to worry about his strange ways. Even if he's a bit on the horrid side, you won't have to spend much time with him, after all. And he does come from a fine family, Flora added with a quick smile. Wait a minute said Aurora, pulling back. Why do you say he's a bit on the horrid side? It's best not focus on such things, dear, said Meriwether. Just do everything your husband tells you to do, said Flora, 
and you will be fine. This is not turning out like I thought, cried Aurora. How long do I have to stay married? Why, for the rest of your life, of course, said Fawn. No, no, this is all wrong, cried Aurora. She turned away, then said in a firm voice, I would rather prick my finger on a spinning wheel and fall asleep for one hundred years. Maybe by the time I wake up, people won't have to get married if they don't want to. And she ran out the door. Dear me, said Meriwether to the other two fairies. I don't believe we prepared her very well for this day. Aurora ran deep into their woods where her animal friends lived. The deer hopped beside her, along with the rabbits and chipmunks. We have to get out of here, she said to all of them. Then pointing to a mountain pass, she said, we will go right through the hills. Soon Aurora came to a road. In the distance was a carriage, coming closer to her. As the rider approached, her animal friends scattered. Hail! said the stranger. I'm afraid my carriage scared away your pets. May I give you a lift? Aurora had never seen a man before. But she couldn't think about that, unless she could find a spinning wheel. The very next day her aunts would take her back to the palace. Actually, said Aurora to the stranger, there is something I need a great deal. What's that? said the stranger, hopping out of the carriage. Very nicely dressed was he, and well mannered, too. A spinning wheel, said Aurora. A spinning wheel, said the stranger. But there are none left in the land, everyone knows that. Well, you see, said Aurora, rubbing her hands together, I have this friend. She needs a spinning wheel in the worst way. Aurora looked directly at the stranger. It's a matter of life or death. The stranger looked at Aurora's eyes. At last, he said, I may know of one, he said. But this needs to stay between you and me. The stranger stepped closer. Not far from here lives an old woman who spun yarn all her life. When the orders came to burn all the spinning wheels, she could not bear to let go of her beloved spinning wheel, as it had been in her family for many years. She came to me, he said, pointing down the road, since I'm a prince from the next kingdom. She begged me to let her store it away safely. So I put it in the attic room of my castle tower, where no one ever goes, until the sixteen years had passed. Would you take me to your tower? said Aurora. I shouldn't, said the prince. Then after a moment, he said, but I will. She stepped onto his carriage. Soon they were at the tower, and they both stepped out. The prince said, this is not for your friend, is it? Thank you for taking me here, said Aurora. I will always remember your kindness. Now if you please, I must do what I must do. Aurora turned and went up the tower stairs to the very last stair. The door in front of her creaked open. Inside, all was dark and musty. She could barely take a step for all the spider webs. But she pushed them aside and stepped forward. There, in a far corner, was the spinning wheel. From a small window, she could tell the sun was already setting. I hope this works, she said, before it's too late. Aurora held out her finger to the tip of the spindle. She pricked her finger on that spindle. One tiny droplet of blood dripped from her finger. At once, Aurora felt dizzy. She fell onto an old dusty velvet blanket that lay on the attic floor, and fell into a deep sleep. Moments later, all the others in the castle, servants and royals alike, fell asleep too, and so did the prince, who was still waiting for her outside the tower. Within hours, 
thorns and vines had sprung up and wrapped around the castle, so thickly that no human or beast could pass through. For one hundred years, Aurora and the others slept. After one hundred years had passed, Aurora blinked her eyes awake. Then all the others in the castle also awoke. Everyone started to do what they had been doing when they had fallen asleep one hundred years before. The thorns and vines around the castle melted away. Aurora stepped down the tower stairs. She found the prince outside the tower, as he had been stayed to wait for her after she had gone up the stairs. Together, they stepped into the prince's carriage. Down the road to the market square, they discovered a whole new world. Bicycles and streetcars, cameras and streetlights, such marvels to behold. Perhaps best of all, they learned that in this strange new time, it was quite all right for young women and men get to know if other if that's what they wanted to do, and even perhaps to fall in love. As Aurora and the prince took each other's hand to explore this wonderful new world together, that is exactly what they wanted to do. Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe for more stories. Bye bye and have a precious day.